What is your first response when you need something? I needed a new phone case. I went on Amazon, I searched for three minutes, and I bought it. In the old days, we'd call up mom and ask how to cook a pot roast, and now Siri tells us in two seconds. We believe we are very self-sufficient, don't we? We can hardly bear the thought of being dependent on somebody. But the Bible tells us a very, very different narrative. We are desperately needy, but God needs nothing. God who needs nothing invites us to depend on him for everything, to seek him for everything, to ask him for everything. God invites us to trust him alone as our provider because he is all sufficient. He is self-sufficient. He's the creator, yet nothing created him. He is the sustainer of life, yet nothing sustains him. He's perfectly provided for in and of himself. He needs no aid. He lacks no strength. He doesn't need our love as he is wholly loving and loved in the eternal companionship of the Trinity. God is self-sufficient. He's needed by all and needful for nothing. He is wholly provided for in the Trinity and thus he can wholly provide for you and me. God owns everything. He can wholly provide for you and me. And he does. How has God abundantly provided more than you could ask or imagine this week or this month? As his people, God provides an extraordinary way to speak with him. God called it prayer. Prayer is a conversation with God. Christ Jesus gifted us with constant access to God. And believers pray to the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ in the power of the Spirit. So when we pray, God listens and hears our prayers and his powerful arms act on our behalf. In prayer, we pray and glorify God. We thank him. We surrender. We repent. We make our requests known to the one who provides, knowing God hears, God sees, God cares, and God has the power to act perfectly. Our Father, providing Father, he loves to hear us pray, and he loves to answer us. Because answered prayer glorifies God. When you and I don't believe in the prayer, we miss the gift of relationship with the one who is all sufficient. The only place that you and I can find wholeness. But when we believe God hears and answers prayer, we come delightfully into his presence because we can express our love for him knowing of his infinite love for us. We trust his ability and desire to perfectly provide for us. We pray not just to solve our problems, but to enjoy communion with our Heavenly Father. Challenge yourself to talk to God without asking Him for anything. Pray in worship, in thanksgiving, adoring Him for His attributes. And then pour out your heart to God and ask Him hard questions and tell Him how you love Him. Talk to Him. The level of our dependence on God is revealed by our prayer life. Prayer is an appeal to one greater with more power and insight than you and I will ever have. So next time you run to your own solution, will you first stop and pray? Christ broke down the wall between us and God. Christ won for us the wonder of prayer. The Sermon on the Mount, it's a heart check. Jesus Christ, he asks us why we do what we do. Why do we trust who we trust? And motives are really tricky, aren't they? Self-dependence is easy, but Jesus says, be my disciple. And if you are my disciple, you have to depend solely on me for everything. I will transform you, and your life will look very, very different. Where are you depending on yourself? The first part of the Sermon on the Mount exhorted us to be right before God and right before others, to do things, publicly seen things that reflect God's glory. What we do matters to God. But now, very confusing. Let me go back to five. Uh, you know, do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Uh, do not divorce. Love your enemies. Don't take oaths. Those were things that, that Jesus said. If you do these things, they reflect God's glory. God's glory. But now, very confusingly, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 1, uh, Jesus says, be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So do your righteous acts in secret. Why is that? Well, who are we trying to impress, God or mankind? God is doing heart work here to help us plant roots that will exalt God alone. 
To illustrate this command, Jesus gives three examples of religious acts people often do for the wrong reasons. First is giving to the needy. When you give, give in secret, then your Father will reward you. So, when we give, are we seeking our own recognition or God's honor? Everything belongs to God. He provides for people, sometimes through people. So don't try to keep what belongs to God. Don't take credit for what God owns. Give lavishly and secretly so God gets all the glory. Second is prayer, verse 5. When you pray, pray in secret and he will reward you. Prayer is this intimate conversation between us and God, confessing our sin, praising him, thanking him, and asking for his perfect provision. And Jesus gave an example of prayer that honors God. It's called the Lord's Prayer. I spent some time hiking up a mountain for two hours, and I was meditating just on each word of the Lord's Prayer, each word alone. What does each word mean? Our, it starts with our. It's yours and mine, the world that is belonging. It's something shared, our. The next word is father, father, lover, creator, provider, kind, is for me. In, in, alive, living, in a real place, physical, heaven, his home, my home, what it's like in the future for me, what other loved ones get to experience right now. Our Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed, holy, perfect, whole, sanctified, consecrated. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We become God's children when we follow Jesus in faith. God is our perfect Father, always loving, always providing, always good. Even his name is holy on our lips. We treat God's name as holy. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for God's kingdom to come both now as people worship King Jesus and in the future when Jesus returns and establishes his unopposed rule on earth like he now has in heaven. God's children want God's will. God is the perfect provider. Why would we desire anything but God's perfect will? Next in verse 11, give us today our daily bread. Well, needs control us, don't they? Needs influence our decisions. The greater our need, the greater our potential to be coerced by our needs. Just ask an addict. Needs weaken us in the face of temptation. So compare our neediness to our all-sufficient God. He is self-sufficient. God needs nothing. God can't be tempted. God won't be tempted. He does not make rash decisions. He does not make decisions based on his own needs. Next time you have a daily need, food, shelter, love, relationship, recognition, will you ask God to be fully satisfied in his provision? At just the right time, in just the right way, Father God provides. Let him show you how marvelous he is. And forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. Everyone sins. We owe a debt to God to our sins, for our sins against him. For all who cast their life on Christ Jesus, Jesus paid our debt on the cross. Forgiven people generously forgive others. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. God's children look to God the Father for our protection. God rescues us from temptation. God rescues us ultimately from Satan himself. Now, praying in secret. Does that mean we don't pray in public? Well, no. Corporate prayer, prayer builds the body of Christ. Corporate prayer within your church or small group, or you know, that builds the body of Christ. But Jesus is saying, check your motives. Check your motives for where and how we pray. Are you praying to the God of the universe, or are you praying to get attention? The third uh, is fasting. Uh, and religious leaders fasted to call attention to themselves, but Jesus says this is a very private act between us and God. God's people must not steal glory from the one who provides perfectly for them. God's people care more about pleasing God than impressing others. So in verse 19, Jesus asks, where is your treasure? 
There's two treasures, a destructible treasure and a treasure in heaven, indestructible. Destructible treasures and indestructible, indestructible treasures in heaven. Treasure in heaven is our obedience to God. These are things that will last. These are things that are rewarded. Where your treasure is, there your heart is. Do you love what God loves? Are you investing in earthly things or eternal relationships? Jesus challenges us in verse 22 how to consider how we see life. Two eyes. One, uh, the eyes like a window to a, to a house. If it is covered, light can't get in. Our thoughts shift from God to ourselves. Our hearts, our desires blur. Our view of life darkens. Instead, keep your eyes clearly on Jesus. Let his light illuminate your steps. Dark eyes, light eyes. Keep your eyes on Jesus so he can illuminate your steps. In verse 24, Jesus challenges us to consider who we serve. Two masters. You're seeing the theme, right? God or money. Don't serve God or money. What influences your decisions? Someone or something will own us and it will influence everything we do. In every decision, we will choose one and ignore the other. We will love one and hate the other. We will let one influence us. Jesus said we cannot serve both God and money. Money is everything shiny the world offers. Achievement, comfort, security, any of that. When these things master you, it just leads to wanting more and we become enslaved. Jesus is our provider. We don't need to serve money to provide for us. God does this. God is our father. Stuff shouldn't own us. God's children value his eternal treasure more than money and things. So now in verse 25, Jesus asks, now who do you trust? And if you trust money, it will just lead you to worry. But if you trust me, I provide in ways you will never have imagined. Just look at the flowers and the birds. God is our great provider. He provides for every cre creature. He feeds the birds. He promises daily bread. And the greatest gift God provided us is in response to our greatest need. A king and a savior from our sin, his son, Jesus. Because he gave us Jesus. We can trust him to give us everything else we need. Worry signals we have forgotten God. We have forgotten that he will perfectly provide. And he will, because he is self-sufficient. All things are under his control and ownership. God perfectly provides for his children. Instead of worry, God's people trust him. They work under his glory and share with each other. When you and I serve money, what we drink, what we eat, what we wear, credit card debt, then worries are only outcome. When we serve money, worries are only outcome. When we serve God, genuine peace and contentment is the outcome. So just look and see. If you're feeling worry, you will see who you are serving. And it's not God. If worry is a constant companion, check to see what you are serving. Our Heavenly Father knows exactly what we need and he will see that our needs are met. When you worry, stop and think about the truths you know about God. Remember his attributes. He is self-sufficient. He owns everything. Yes, he is a perfect provider. If you need a place to live, he knows. If you need food or clothes, he knows. He knows everything, and he will provide in his perfect way. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. We are to seek God's kingdom and God's righteousness. Our focus is Jesus, not earthly things, not people. Remembering God reduces worry. God's people trust God to provide. Worry is a result of not trusting God. Our God is the God of creation, the God of the universe. He created everything. He holds it all together. He doesn't need us, and he's not going to drop the ball. So how will you live out genuine trust in a God who is totally self-sufficient? God saves us not in our sufficiency, but in our lack. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word. So here's what I pray you believe. God perfectly provides. God, who is self-sufficient, perfectly provides. Will you please pray with me? God, help us to trust you in this. Help us to serve you alone, to not be distracted by things of this world that pull us into other places, but to trust you, that you will help us be generous givers 
that you will help us be fervent of prayers, that you will help us be sacrificial in our worship to you. And when it comes to the daily needs of this life, that we will see how you provide for the birds. We will see how you have provided for us, and we will trust you. In your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.